So the creative process takes many different shapes. And for some people, that means nice, clean, organized sessions that are all color matched, all grouped really well, all the processing is happening in parallel or it needs to be in parallel, and everything just looks super tidy. For some people, you've muted 70 different tracks that you're going to use later. Entire song sections are pushed so far down the timeline that you completely forgot they're there. You've side-chained your kick drum to a banjo because you thought it would sound interesting, and you're clipping so much you've just invented a new genre of noise core. I get it. The creative process can be messy. And if I were to categorize myself as one of these two different types of people, I would be the crazy chaotic one. But eventually, you're going to find the way that you want your track to sound after enough time and enough effort, and then a thought is gonna come into your mind. How the f do I mix this? This is where I'm going to gently remind you of that first example of the person who organizes all their tracks, has really proper naming conventions, has them grouped together and color matched. That's all something we can then begin to do after we've dealt with the chaos. And in a mixing world, the ideal scenario is you already have a template built, meaning you already have a file that you can drag all the audio files into, and you can begin mixing based off of some sort of template you've developed in the past. But the home musician typically does not have a template set up, and quite honestly, templates don't always follow the exact necessities of the song. So today we're gonna go over four different things on how we can organize our session whenever we mix it so we can avoid the headache of all the craziness that we've just dealt with when we wrote the song. The first thing we're going to talk about today is submixes, and it goes by different names depending on the DAW you're working in. And you can usually use a bunch of different techniques even within the DAW itself in order to accomplish this. In Ableton, you're gonna be working with groups. I'm not sure what it is in Logic. I've never used Logic, but I guarantee you there's a way to make submixes in Logic. Just look it up. And today we're actually going to be using Pro Tools because I think it's the easiest way to demonstrate this concept. Uh, and in Pro Tools, we're going to be using a new feature called routing folders. The second thing we're going to talk about today is auxiliary processing or parallel processing, a really common example being parallel compression. The third thing we're gonna talk about today, kind of similar to the second thing, this is auxiliaries meant for modulation in harmonics, the most basic example of that being reverb and delay. And then we're gonna talk about a mix print, which is where you can work on uh, basically processing the whole song as a whole, uh, and it's where you sum all of these submixes together. We're also gonna talk about a master, which is sort of a similar thing, um, depending on how you work with your specific session. So this is a session that I actually did the other day. Uh, it's kind of like an Indian neoclassical uh, sort of song. It doesn't really matter though what the song is because I should mention we're not going to be mixing We're not even going to be talking about the concepts of parallel compression or all the things you can do with track organization This is specifically about organizing your track. We can talk about those subject matters in another video Otherwise, this is going to be like an hour long. So if we look at our track here Everything is like a black gray color. Nothing is color organized The first thing I'm going to do click on all these things that need to be together. So for example, kick, snare, rack tom, floor tom, overheads, all of that is a drum kit. So I'm gonna color it orange. And this is pretty basic. I'm just gonna fast forward through me coloring all the tracks because everyone knows how to color tracks, hopefully. Great, now that we've colored all of our tracks, let's go ahead and put these different things into different submixes. And the way we do that in Pro Tools is by highlighting the things that we wanna move into a submix. I can right click on it, move to new folder, make it a routing folder and name it. I'm gonna name this one drum kit. So what I want you to notice now, I'm in the mix window. Everything that's in the drum kit group has now moved into a bus that is now going into the drum kit. The drum kit now is going to the output. This gets a little bit complicated to explain because of the fact that the process of putting these things into these submixes is gonna differ depending on whatever DAW you're working within. Again, if we're working in Ableton, we're talking about groups. So I'm gonna go through here I'm not gonna work with the bass because it's only one track. Put everything else into a routing folder or a submix. So I've gone back and I've colored all the different groups the same color as the uh, tracks that are inside of those groups. But great, everyone knows how to group these things together. Why is it important that we do this? Well, this is nice now because all the microphones that are picking up the piano, I can process as a group before I send it to the submix. As an example, let's say I go to the piano and I know I don't want a lot of low end on the piano. I can just add a low cut and process all these things together. Now that doesn't mean you can't also process the individual tracks. For example, if I wanted to boost one of the pianos uh, on, let's say I wanted to boost the mid piano, I can go in and I can add its own EQ on top of it. I can boost the top end, 
but I don't have to affect everything else. And then I can affect everything else in its own submix. So the way you group all these tracks is gonna depend on the genre that we're working within. For example, if you're working in EDM and a really kick heavy thing, I probably wouldn't group the kick drum with the rest of the drum kit because a kick is gonna need a whole bunch of other special processing. I'm gonna move that to its own separate submix. But if you're working in something that is like more acoustically driven like this jazz track, I might wanna process the drums all together. I might wanna be more transparent about the way I process it, maybe not a lot of heavy side chaining or a lot of heavy compression. And I can just make mild adjustments to the entire thing as a whole. And another thing about what makes this nice, let's just solo the drum kit. I just have one fader to control the level of the kit. And then I can control all of the different elements inside of it. Like I don't need both of these microphones in the kick so loud. I'll tame the snare bottom, make the overheads into stereo. I mixed them up. But then go in here on an EQ. And again, I'm, I'm not actually gonna be EQing this. This is just a proof of concept. Add some air, make a little bit of low cut where I feel I need to. So there's a few reasons why submixing is also important beyond this, including gain staging, controlling your gain until you get to the master in a really organized fashion, and also working with auxiliary channels, which is the next thing we're going to be speaking about. So if I go in here, I set up a stereo auxiliary input. If you're working in Ableton, you'll already have these. They're just called returns. I'm going to call this one parallel compression. I'm going to color it yellow. Set the input to my parallel compression bus, which I already made. Uh, in advance of recording this video. If you're working with Ableton, you can do this by going to the individual fader in Ableton and then just turning the knob on the A, B, C, whatever the letter is of the auxiliary or return track you're working with. So then I'm going to send the entire kit on a bus to our parallel compression. Maybe send negative 10 dB. Set my answer to be some sort of compressor. I'm just gonna do one of the standard ones from Pro Tools. I'm not even gonna bother to set it. But now, if I play the track, we're getting signal coming into the compressor from the submix of the drum kit. And to take this concept a step further, I'm gonna make another stereo. You're almost always gonna be working in stereo. I'm gonna make another one. Uh, we're gonna call it a uh, high pass EQ. Let's say for some reason I wanted to do another parallel processing uh, with like a high pass filter. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go to the EQ. I'm gonna hit one of the uh, one band EQs, set it to a high pass filter, set the input of it to parallel EQ and send our entire kit once again to parallel EQ. So now I should have a duplicate signal of the original drum kit submix being sent into a high pass filter. Hear that air that we get? I'm not saying it's great, but how you organize the session. And then to take this even one step further, why don't I select these two, move them into a routing folder, new folder, let's call this parallel processing. We've moved them into a new bus that's automatically generated and now the submix of the parallel processing is going to the output. Now this next concept, auxiliaries for modulation, harmonics, reverb and delay, it's the same thing. So now we're just gonna go in and we're gonna make the exact same auxiliary tracks. We're gonna call this one room reverb. Let's make these like a purple. I'm gonna make another one. This one's gonna be hall reverb. Uh, and then we'll do one more with delay. Go in, set the bus input, which you can make in your IO settings if you're working in Pro Tools. If you're in Ableton, again, you're gonna wanna work with the auxiliary sends or the return sends in the fader menu. Put whatever your desired reverb or delay plugin is on one of these. I'm just gonna use like the air reverb. I can then go to the submix that we've already done the processing on and I can send them on a bus to the reverbs, the halls, whatever I want. So I'm gonna send this one to the hall and send one to delay, even though delay on a kick is not the best idea. <laughs> and here's our signal. Turn the reverb up. Turn the delay down. And if I wanted to, I could move all of these into their own new routing folder we'll call this modulation so now we have all of the microphones we used on all the individual instruments all grouped processed through a submix and then we have those submixes going to a parallel processing if we wanted to do parallel compression or some creative eqing and we also have a submix for modulation things like reverbs and delays if you want to do like a distortion, flanger, whatever you happen to use. The last part of this I want to mention is the mix print. So I'm going to make another 
stereo aux track and we're going to call it mix print i'm going to make the mix print like a dark red because i think pro tools used to do that automatically and i just like it set the input of my mix print to be the mix print bus that i've already made if you're working in ableton we're talking about a master here They're, they just call it a master one thing about ableton i don't like by the way is it has like really small amount of headroom so if you're mixing in ableton i almost recommend that whenever you just start the mixing process turn all the faders down to like negative six DB. Otherwise, it's just so easy to clip in Ableton. But anyways, I'm gonna go to where everything says output and I want to instead route it into the bus that has the mix print. So now, instead of everything just going straight to my headphones, it's going to one individual track that is then going to my headphones. So now if I play the track, I have a master fader, essentially. Now here is where you can begin to process the entire track all together. Be careful with this. These should be really subtle moves because if you don't do subtle moves, you can do a bunch of damage to all the careful processing you already did on your submixes. So if you're going to do some EQing, I personally probably wouldn't move any more than two or three dB. This is insane and a really great way to immediately destroy all your hard work. Use the processing you do on your final fader carefully. So if you happen to have any like mastering console plugins, like for example, I have this, this one here, this is a good place to put it so you can begin processing things to the appropriate amount of levels. Side note, I know I just did a video about um, not needing expensive plugins, but I want to say I was given this for my education. I did not pay for this. Well, I, I just paid like, an ungodly amount of money for my education, which came with some plugins, so don't be mad. And the final thing I could do if I wanted to is I could make a stereo master fader, and this is gonna depend on your software. It's basically just the same thing as a mix print. The mix print is being sent to the master, so now if I play it, it's a new master. But here is where I might do something like, uh, I have uh, essentially a mix monitoring plugin, which is going to tell me how healthy my levels are and how healthy like the stereo field is, and it's going to tell me how healthy, uh, basically has a bunch of different graphics to tell you the health of your mix. I might put this on a master before I bounce it or I print it within the software itself. So stop for a second, because I want to tell you everything we've done. We've taken something that was completely unorganized, completely uncolored, grouped them with color. We've grouped them inside of tracks, inside of submixes for separate processing, set up parallel compression. We've set up high pass filters, anything we want to do to add creative uh, sort of effects in parallel to the actual track. We've set up a submix for reverbs and delays and any other thing we want to do in parallel to the actual track. And we've set up a final mix print where we can mix our final thing and do processing on the track as a whole. This is a template. You've just made a template. And if you've been following along or you're going to do this here in a second, you can customize this template to whatever your track is or whatever your workflow is, if you have the same instruments you use on every track, use this and import all of your audio files into these sessions and you've made a mix template. It's gonna speed up your workflow so quickly. For example, I don't think a lot of people are going to be playing tablas. That's sort of a special case for this song, but I bet a lot of people are gonna be playing a synth. If you happen to have a certain specific synth, make a submix for it, use it on every session. It's just how you save time. And that is all. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed your time with me. Follow me on Instagram at Real Audio Haze. If you happen to want lessons, I'll put my qualifications up on the screen. You can email me at realaudiohaze at gmail.com, all lowercase. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.